Skyrim has had a major update and oh boy, this one is going to be controversial, I'm almost certain of it. We're going to need to go back over 8 years to begin this story because back in 2015 Bethesda partnered with Valve to add paid mods to Skyrim through Steam. And it's safe to say it did not go down well. Uh, the results the results were so poor that I think it barely made it one week before Valve backed out, stating they had, quote, missed the mark pretty badly. Now, Bethesda didn't pour water on the idea in the same way Valve did. Uh, this is what they had to say on the matter. We believe most mods should be free, but we also believe our community want to reward the very best creators, and that they deserve to be rewarded. We believe the best should be paid for their work and treated like the game developers they are. But again, we don't think it's right for us to decide who those creators are or what they create. So the door was certainly left ajar. And of course, two years later, Bethesda released Creation Club in 2017. And this wasn't quite as controversial. Some bought into the idea, some begrudgingly accepted it, or simply just ignored it. And at first I was in the latter bracket. It was effectively paid DLC content, and nothing that you couldn't already get for free in the modding community, and as such I didn't play any of it really at first. And that brings me on to this latest update that came out yesterday on December the 5th. Bethesda are slowly creeping out from behind that ajar door, and once again they are dangling the carrot for creators to earn for their work. Now, I'm going to start off by stating as far as modders earning for their work, I can see both sides of this argument because I'm now sat firmly in the content creation camp. I'm lucky enough that I have enough subscribers and enough watched content that I am in the YouTube paid partner program and as such I can monetize my content if, if I want to with ads. And I do do that. A lot of time and effort goes into making videos, editing, researching topics and so on. And I hope to make a living from this. It's as simple as that, really. So, by proxy, I don't think I should sit here and say all mods should be free in principle. Uh, people put a lot of time and effort into these things. And I mean a lot of time and effort. And they should be paid fairly for work if they want to. Um, and that's obviously great for them. But watching a video on YouTube for free and just having to put up with an occasional ad pop-up and placing mods behind a paywall are obviously two different things. The previous attempt to launch paid mods was, it went so badly because of the way the mod ecosystem has existed for years and years, so we've been truly blessed by the modding community, and I mean like spoiled by them. Mods work on a very effective more for more principle. It's a gift economy essentially, isn't it? Everyone creates mods for the betterment of the community, and because we pool all our expertise and time into it, and share the outcomes with each other, Everyone then benefits from it. Other modders can then use those free mods to create their own mods, which they in return release to the community. So, modders are working for free, but the community's gaining like all of it, including the modders. So if suddenly some creators start pulling content because they can earn from it, and only releasing it through paid methods, there's nothing inherently wrong with that at all, but it hurts the mod ecosystem in a few ways. Not everyone will access them, of course, and that means less exposure and less for other modders, less other modders, sorry, working with them to create other mods. And some mods may be technically dependent on the work of other mods to work. Also, if you're working for free, but your neighbour's suddenly being paid for their work that they also used to do for free, are you incentivized to continue doing it for free or not? So that's basically why I think this will be controversial which in a way is kind of mad because people being paid for their work isn't controversial. You'd think people not being paid would be. But such is the way the modding communities work together in a perfect non-for-profit way. That's where we find ourselves. And to be honest, I mean it's the way gaming's going isn't it, whether we like it or not. More and more games are wanting to monetize their games to drive revenue growth. So I can see this being the way that other games go like Starfield and GTA 6 most definitely will do it, and so on. Um, so that's my yeah thoughts on it by the way. Um, let me know what you think in the comments. I don't want this video to be all negative. So yeah, let's take a look into what this update brings, shall we? 
Um, so this is the new Skyrim Star menu, guys, and this is what Bethesda has posted. Posted. So our new creations menu combines the old mods with Creation Club. Uh, sorry, uh, Creation mods with Creation Club with a revamped layout. Additionally, we are excited to launch our verified creator program with new official releases and vetted community content. Check out our article on Bethesda.net to learn more. And yeah, beforehand, how we had Creation Club and Mods, I think it was, as two separate entities. You've now just got Creations, so yeah, let's uh, take a look at what's in here. Right, what have we got? So, this, yeah, this looks totally different. So, what do we have in here? Okay, so... Ah, so some of the old stuff is still here. So, ah, so you've got, like, the old mod system, which is in here. <laughs> oh, it's the lady in her underwear. Um, yeah, the old mod system is still here. Most likes and things like that. So that that's all still there. This is the... This is what is in my library, and the this is all the DL, the old uh, anniversary edition Creation Club content, isn't it? So we've got things like, yeah, Adventurer's Backpack, uh, Pets of Skyrim, Camping, Nordic Jewelry, The Contest, Headman's Cleaver, yeah. So I, obviously, I, I play on anniversary edition, so I've got all this installed already. Arcane Archer Pack, Ruin's Edge... Plague of the Dead, yeah, this is everything that is was on there under Creation Club beforehand. And what we've now got is this section here, which is the... I'm assuming this is all the new content. So we've got East Empire Expansion, Winter Frost Plus Edition, Catcher the Thief, Legendary Dungeons Dwarven Delves, Ar Archibus... Old Mary Anti Mage and Shade Tree Lodge. Dragon Slayer Bow and Siege Arrows. I'm not sure what that is. Kynes Grove. Dawnstar. Are these just. Oh, I think these just must meet other. Yeah, these are other featured mods, aren't they? So it, it's basically up to here. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I wonder if. Can we, I wonder how we search, can we, is there a way of look, searching and looking into what these all are? Ah, so we've got a category list here. So we have Creation Club. Ah, so this is, this is the, the, the menu system we have already here, isn't it? So, banner must be what is at the top, what is featured, I'm guessing. So if we click on that, yes. So this is the new... The, basically the new seven pieces of the first wave, I'm guessing, of this new, yeah, Creations that's replaced Creation Club. Um, so, let's, yeah, should we take a look at what we've got? So, Winterfrost Plus Edition we'll start with. By the Dog of War. Um, so this must be, the, yeah, the Dog of War must be one of the paid... One of the new um, verified content creators. So, uh, Winterfrost Plus Edition. Experience an enhanced experience with new assets and audio available exclusively with the Plus Edition. Winterfrost is a law friendly home that boasts many interactive features, plenty of unique and basic storage containers, including unique display points for quest and miscellaneous items. Winterfrost supports survival mode and also includes a craftable robot which the player can use to fast travel to Solitude's exterior from Winterfrost. How to get to Winterfrost? The home can be accessed by visiting the Winking Skeever in Solitude and reading the mercenary's notes located on the left hand side of the bar. After reading the note, make your way to the undiscovered location it mentions called Liar's Descent. This is located on a small island next to the Dainty Slowed. Interactive and interchangeable features. Interchangeable bedroom flooring, walls, removable, placeable rugs, wall baskets, pelts, taxidermy, toggleable interior lighting. Also, you can sort of customise it in some sort of sense. 
some of the above must be accessed via the House Alterations book found in the Sleeping Quarters. Basic displays, 23 weapon wax, 16 shield mount points, 4 mannequins, workbenches, cooking pot, oven, workbench, blacksmith forge, grindstone smelter. That's just a list of stuff that it's got with it. This creation includes replicas of the following unique items for display purposes only. Ethereal crown, ethereal staff, shield, 90 gold bow. Oh, so it's, so it's, is this basically saying, does this mean you've got space to display them or they're already there so you don't have to use the real, put the real ones down? I don't know. No, but it's cool that it's got, yeah, at least place to do, to, to, all your things. I'm hoping there's not going to be the same issues with the current homes we've got where things get locked. 23 weapon racks sounds great, but yeah. <laughs> I mean, put 23 weapons in Hendraheim at the minute and you're probably the next time you're going to go in there. They're either going to be all over the floor or they are going to be locked and you are not going to be able to get them. Um, interior harvestables, mead kegs, butter churn, various flora, unique miscellaneous item displays, bust of the grey fox, honey brew decanter, queen bee statue. Oh, okay, so you could, does this mean you can actually put all, they're, they're all, um, what's it called? The Thieves Guild uh, Radiant Quest items, aren't they? Initiates you, uh, Dwemer Puzzle Cube, Waystone Replica. Okay, so some of these, uh, there's not actually places where you can put them, isn't there? Like the Dragonstone, for example. That's a great item you get early on, but there's nowhere specifically where you can store it. So that's cool. Mass display stands. It's got all, all that pretty standard stuff. Dagger display cases, Merun's Razor, Keening, Blade of Worm, Nettlebane, Blade of Sacrifice, Unique Bow display racks, Stave display receptacles, Yep, unique containers, firewood storage, bowl of gemstones, openable staff storage chest, baked goods, potion shelf. So it's, it seems pretty, there's a lot going on here. Unique containers, scrolls, shoes and boots, notes. I wonder if these are like, have they created their own containers that, that are in the home that are not based on the base game? So like a container that contains potions, a container that can, when you walk in, it contains shoes and boots. Do you know, like, um, cluttered items just to make the, the home a bit more, like, come to life a bit more. Basic storage containers. Oh, yeah. This is, must be all the stuff that's actually inside the house. Note, Winterfrost Plus Edition does not support adoption or companions. But companions will enter the home. As always, thank you for supporting my work. So, and then we've got some pictures as well. So let's have a look. Let's actually have a look at what we've got here. Now, this is interesting. Also, in the background, you can see it looks like there's daggers already in there. So I wonder if they they are just they, yeah maybe they are just replicas of those weapons stored. Ah, okay. Maybe this person's been clever. Maybe they've thought, well, weapon racks are buggy. So rather than have someone having to put them in and then risk losing them, let's just have everything filled so you can enjoy it looking full, but then you don't have to lose, you don't have to uh, potentially lose them or it means you can use them as weapons. I don't, I don't know, that's just me guessing. This looks interesting. All the the dragon claws on the left, that's quite an interesting way of displaying them. This must be the master bedroom. Oh yeah, you can see all the cl the clutter and the fat in there, like the scroll storage and the the shoes underneath. This must be the new items that they've created to put in there. These these look just like reskins of existing items. That looks is that the house? That looks like the where the um, the Thalmor the Thalmor Embassy. Interesting. Okay, so yeah, first piece of content is a new home. Um, I. 
I can't remember what 600, what these creation points translate as, but if 600 is six pounds or six dollars, that's, that's, I don't know, it feels kind of steep, doesn't it really? Considering what, what you got for, uh, what was it called? Uh, anniversary edition was like 15 pound I probably paid for it and you got like nine homes what 20 or 30 different weapons and pieces of armor loads of different items some massive quests I don't know I don't, I don't know yeah I, I'm not sure what 600 is but if it is six dollars yeah I don't know I will obviously be downloading all these and showcasing them and doing videos on them um, so yeah, so you can see them all, but yeah, let me know what your thoughts are on the purchase price of that and whether I'm right. Uh, so yeah, look at the second one, Shade Tree Lodge, which is 500 creation points. And this one is made by, okay, so this one is actually made by Eleonora. So she, um, yeah, made a lot of the homes for Anniversary Edition. So a stone's throw away from Riften. This remote yet accessible lodge offers a comfortable home for the Dragonborn with all crafting amenities and a secret display room hidden in the basement. Full of beautiful static clutter, named unique storage for all your loot and materials, beautiful private fishing spot, displays and mannequins galore. The house needs to be discovered but after you've found it, it's yours for the taking. Follow me on socials for latest modding news, blah blah blah. I also stream on Twitch. Okay. Yeah, so, so this is, yeah, this is like, Bethesda are obviously introducing this as a way for content creators to add their, be able to monetize their content easier. And they're obviously verified content creators, but it is very, it's very much done from the, um, yeah, from the point of view of the the content creator, aren't they? They've written all this. This isn't written by Bethesda. This has been written by Eleonora. So let's have a look at the images for this one. I mean, Eleonora is very, very, very talented. Um, her homes are generally very, very good. So this one, I'm no doubt, will be, yeah, really, really, really nice. Yeah, the, des the design of it's it's beautiful, isn't it, from the outside? <laughs> yeah, this is a uh, quite homely, isn't it? Okay, very nice uh, alchemy enchanting station. Is this the basement? I wonder. God, we've got there's a staff and a stave enchanter as well behind the staircase. And then, yeah, uh, place to store all your items, weapons, and whatnot. I like that little chest in the corner that's, like, full of... It looks like it's got the... Um, what's the crown you get as part of No Stone Unturned? The crown of Baron Zyre. That's what's in that chest, isn't it? Interesting. Library. Okay, so that's where that one's located. Okay, yeah. That one seems, yeah, nice. Uh, yeah, if, if these, if that is $5 or £5, we're up to 11 already for these two. So, Legendary Dungeons, Dwarven Delves. And this one is been made by Trainwiz. Uh, explore dungeons straight out of legend. Legendary dungeon brings locations from Elder Scrolls Online into Skyrim. Okay, adding sprawling dungeons filled with new factions, enemies, items, and secrets. New enemy sounds interesting. Um, yeah, I never actually played Elder Scrolls Online, um, which is surprising considering how much I like Skyrim. But so yeah, I don't actually. This doesn't ring a bell. For for me, but I'm assuming, yeah, for some people it will do. Uh, furthermore, each dungeon features a secret dungeon, secret, second dungeon within it. Plunge the deepest depths and find yourself in sanctums and engines not seen by mortal eyes in aeons. Legendary Dungeons Dwarven Dells features two brand new adventures. 
Stone Garden. Deep inside Stone Garden, the rogue alchemist Alar Ghostfall and his students have taken over this dwarven ruin. Intent on resurrecting a long dead alchemical genius to steal his secrets, but as their necromantic vapours seep into the cracks of the ruin, something else has come back to life instead. Dispel ghost bottles, rituals, and you might find the stone crypts of Stone Garden open to you, and that the dwarven kings of old don't take kindly to being awoken from their mechanical slumber. Even so, a skilled adventurer might be able to take advantage of their knowledge of weapons craft. Stone Garden's entrance can be found within Pine Moon Cave near the entrance. Frost Faults. Meanwhile, a group of rogue Altmer craftsmen have claimed to be able to finally understand the secrets of the Dwemer, but their intentions are anything but good. And as they excavate the lost Frost Faults, the powers they wield are beginning to surge out of control. Turn the right levers, uh, turn the right levers and valves, and you might find yourself in the churning, burning gearworks of the Drake Engine. Within these tunnels of light and steam, a great dwarven architect committed a terrible sacrilege, put his sins to rest, however, and you might find uh, you might yourself learning and you might yourself learning some strange new spells. Okay. <laughs> the entrance to Frost Vault can be found within Uttering Hills Cave, where a fork in the cave system will lead you to a lost Dwemer checkpoint. <clears throat> Sorry, my voice went a bit then. Lost Dwemer checkpoint. So, let's have a look at what this one. This one's 400, so we're going down in in in, uh, in price at the minute. Wow, that was interesting. Okay. Yeah, this place looks already looks quite large, doesn't it? And we've got Dwarven Centurions. Nice. Wow. Dwarven spiders, it looks like. I wonder if they meant, yeah, new enemies. I hope it is like new, actual new enemies, or not just like the same enemies. Uh, oh, wow. This, yeah, these look, well, by the sounds of it, these are going to be, the Dwarven um, ruins do tend to be quite large, some of the dungeons, so I'm guessing, yeah, this one does sound like it's going to be huge as well, which is good. I'm all for DLC-sized quests. The anniversary one ed edition ones were... They were good, I thought, because they, they did take a good few hours to complete. They weren't like a five-minute quest done. That was kind of a, yeah, a bit of a waste of time. They, they were they were really some of them were really quite long, which you want really if you're paying for something. Okay, so yeah, let's go up to Old Merry Anti Mage, which is also 400 uh, credits. This one is by Niero. Uh, adds a four-piece set of Thalmor light armor regalia. Worn by Thalmor Justicar mages as they suppress Talosh worship across Skyrim. Craftable with the Elven Smithing Perk or taken by force from the Thalmor themselves. Created by Calder Niero Ross. Okay, so this one is just a... Yeah, this is just a light armor set, isn't it? So... And it must be the one in the background. Yeah, like the new the new mage light armor. Oh, so it's a new mage light armor set because the Thalmor set was just robes, wasn't it? I think it wasn't armor. It looks quite nice. I like the design of it. Yeah, it's definitely um yeah, it's definitely a nice design. Oh, it's got a hooded version as well. Ah, in the um, <laughs> you can see the uh, the Khajiit uh, the Khaji ears underneath it. Okay, so that's yeah, basically that's just a, an armor set. I mean, four hundred for an armor set. If if that is four pounds or four dollars, that is steep. 
That is definitely steep. I'm not going to sugarcoat that. But, yeah. I mean, I'll buy it because... I mean, I'm a content creator and I kind of have to, but... Yeah. No, no, I will, yeah. I'll support all these and I will I will purchase them and do videos on them, like I say. Um, Ar Arquebus. What is this? Uh... The quest can be started by entering the Dwemer Ruins Thunchar... Thun Thunchan Thumbs. Thunchar Thumbs. Located north of Cradle Crush Rock. Inside you'll find the base version of the Arquebus. And upon completion of the quest you'll be able to craft all other versions of the Arquebus and its ammo. It's recommended you be at least level 10 before attempting the dungeon as it's a lengthy one filled with a lot of enemies including new dwarven automaton types capable of dishing out a lot of damage to anyone unprepared. I think I'll probably just do that, dive straight in early on to be honest. That's what we tell, should I start a new, yeah, we'll, we could start a new playthrough and just go straight for this. Um, once the quest is completed and a side is chosen within the Civil War after the Jagged Crown quest, you'll be able to you'll be approached by a courier with a letter to report your discovery within uh, to report your discovery within Thunchar Thumbs to do whichever side you chose in the Civil War quest line and introduce the Archibus to the level lists and be awarded with a unique Archibus, assuming you chose to share your discovery or keep it for yourself. Okay. Oh. I've just realised what this is. I've, it completely went over my head. So, the an arquebus is like an old rifle, isn't it? It's like the, a very early gun, essentially. So, like going back to the medieval times, probably like a thousand years ago, up to like probably the fifteen, sixteen hundreds. <clears throat> Sorry, my voice is going now. Yeah, up to the 15 or 1600s, the arquebus was used by like musketeers, wasn't it? And yeah, it, it's just in a very early, an early rifle. <laughs> oh my gosh, it is! It is actually a gun, isn't it? Wow, we have got Skyrim has got guns. Uh, okay, so. <laughs> oh wow, look at that. Oh my gosh. This is like different types in that's like a dwarven one, that looks more like a, a steel one or something. Oh, it's like a, an iron one maybe. Like iron, steel, dwarven, I don't know, dragon or something. Um, Oh, that must be the... Yeah, that's like your... your, your what holds your ammunition, isn't it? Okay, so there's dwarven dwarven machines use use them as well. Okay. The arquebus benefits from the archery skill tree and can be a powerful hand cannon. <coughs> oh, sorry. Can be a powerful hand cannon to deal big damage with a single shot and negating 50% of your target's armour with the drawbacks of being loud and slow to reload unless fully invested into the archery skill to speed up its reload time. To craft the arquebus ammo you'll first need to make black powder at a smelter, then you will use the black powder at a forge to create the desired ammo type for your arquebus. New content added, uh, a 25 to 35 minute long dungeon, arquebus. Oh, and then just a list of different weapons. So there's a, a unique Arquebus, the Atz gear. Dragon Arquebus, Saber, Dwarven, Dove, unique Dragon Arquebus. Khan Thumex Verdict, a unique Dwarven one. Caliver, a unique Saber one. Arquebusier Staff. Archibus ball, overloaded Archibus ball, explosive Archibus ball, so you've got different ammo types that you can use. And then there's a showcase video. Interesting. Um, so, and this one's by Shoe Burglar. So, yeah. 
it um, <laughs> rifles in Skyrim. Make make that of what you will. I've just noticed as well it says law friendly at the top. Models and textures, quests, weapons. Oh, they, they're like the tags, aren't they? Law friendly. Is rifle, is it an Arquebus law friendly in Skyrim? I don't know. I mean, I suppose anything's law friendly, isn't it? I mean, it's 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 non-fiction. It's about dragons, so I mean, anything can be law friendly. Okay, yeah. So I'm actually interested to do this one because this a new weapon type, and it says benefits from the archery skill tree. So I we could do. I think I'm gonna play. I'm definitely gonna play with this one. I wanna. I'm gonna see what this is like as a weapon type. Is it just gonna be? Is it just going to make um, archery um, more, even more busted than it already is? Yeah, yeah, I'm interested to try this one, definitely. Uh, and then the final two, East Empire Expansion, which is 700, uh, the most expensive. Which is, this is by King Gath Creations. The East Empire Company is looking to expand their reach in Skyrim. They need your help. In exchange for your help building up the East Empire Company's presence in Skyrim, <clears throat> they'll provide you with powerful tools to help your adventuring. Loot delivery services. The EEC will carry your extra load out of dungeons and back to town or even back to your home. Wow. Sell your wares. Give your extra items to an EEC merchant. And they'll sell your items for you over time. Uh, okay. I mean, that first one seems very handy. It's basically just like, if you just... Yeah, you can just get them to carry all the stuff if you just like to take everything. But yeah, the second one... Give your extra items to an EEC merchant and they'll sell them. Is that just a way of like getting a cute, getting a money over a sustained period? As a way of like, I don't know, um, role playing, I guess. Because like, why wouldn't you just sell them now? Like there and now. Uh, yeah, anyway. Um, claim dungeons. Claim dungeons in the name of the EEC and receive a cut of their mining operations. Then watch them take over the locations with guards and mining teams. That's interesting. I mean, there's how many dungeons are there in Skyrim? Like, 200? I don't know. Is there more? How many of them can you, can you just, like, claim Skyrim? <laughs> hmm. As you engage in their services, claim locations in their name... <clears throat> and convince the Yars to allow them to do business, you'll witness the East Empire's presence grow as they set up outposts in the Nine, Holds and Raven Rock. Eventually those outposts will improve and grant even more services and benefits to you for helping them. Features a professionally... <coughs> oh man, my voice is really starting to go. Sorry about that. Um, features a professionally voice acted quest line. Oh, brilliant. So, oh, that this is actually amazing. Um, if anyone, or obviously people watch my content normally um, for Anniversary Edition, one of my biggest gripes with AE, and I get, and I totally get it because it's all been made by modders, but is it's, I think it's quite immersion breaking being given notes all the time because you'll be in a conversation and then it'll be like, it's all in this note. It's all in this note. Hey, why don't you read this note? Here's a note from a courier. And it's just, it, I don't know, it just, it could just, it could have just been so much better. And, and, I, and I totally understand that voice acting and having that, and, and that is difficult to do. It's, it's costly, it's time consuming, and it's harder to execute. So you either use the content, you either use the lines in the game, or you just have them written on a note. But this features a, a voice acted quest line, which is, this should be, I've got high hopes for this now. Um, 
yeah, voice acted questline and dynamic systems that will allow these new services to work with base game content, other creations, <clears throat> and even community mod added locations. Interesting. Base game content creations and even... So they're basically saying this won't... It'll work with mods and other... So like... Yeah, that's what I'm getting from that. So we look through the pictures. East Empire Relic. It's just one of the new NPCs. The East Empire Warehouse. Yarl Korea. Oh, so this is must be some of, <clears throat> some of the new dialogue system. Please take 250 septums. <clears throat> Sorry, just having a drink to try and sort my uh, voice out. Please take 250 septums. I'd like to offer you this book as a gesture of goodwill. Allow their presence in Winterhold. It would surely encourage trade. So you basically... Yeah, this is like trying to expand the East Empire. So you've got different dialogue options, haven't you? I'm weary of strangers, but I shall hear what you have to say. I know of your kind, Khajiit. Speak, but know that I'm watching you. Okay, so I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm hope it's. I'm assuming that these options is this where they've got the new, uh, yeah, the new dialogue system. I'm wondering, which will be interesting if possible, because this is that's like different characters, not just a few characters as part of the quest. If it's like part of the game. So you can ask them these questions and then get new dialogue. That's actually that's that'll be quite big. That. Uh, this must be East M. Oh, this must be like one of the stores set up. Okay. So this is what it's like beforehand, and then after you've yeah expanded, it's it ends up like this. And this, oh, this is in Dawnstar, so this must be after, yeah, after it, after obviously still expanding, expanding your reach. Okay. This seems like quite a, an interesting mod, this, if it's one that develops over time, in-game. Yeah, that, that seems, that seems quite good. Um, and then finally, catch the thief. And this one is made by Unoctium. Meet Katja, the teenage thief who has been caught by the guards one too many times, but this time the Dragonborn intervenes, offering her a chance at redemption. Katja is a DLC level companion with over 1200 lines of fully voiced professional dialogue. Okay. Wow, so we've got more new dialogue. 1,200 lines. I don't know, is that is that a lot? Is that like... How much did Serana have when she was added? I think she was like... She was a, a, well over a 1,000, wasn't she? So... Yeah. 1,200 lines. Not only can she join your party without any restrictions, but her resourcefulness and stealth... <clears throat> Will easily guide her round traps and at the, and the toughest locks on chests. I'm calling BS on that, by the way. One of my favourite pastimes in this game is watching followers get f blasted across rooms by those spike traps. You know the ones where you stand on it and a massive door comes swinging out and just literally like pummels them across the room. I'm going to say now, there is no way Katja is going to avoid them because NPCs never avoid them. They always walk into them and it's hilarious. Uh, will her skills prove instrumental in, a, in your journey as the Dragonborn or will she lead you into a life of crime? The only way actually I'm thinking maybe they won't is if she's got, if she's got like an inbuilt mechanic that gives her the... <clears throat> oh my god, my voice. Um, that gives her the... 
the perk that doesn't make sure you light feet is it where you don't trigger pressure plates that's the only thing I can think of uh, catcher can be found at the white run marketplace as the companion is an ESL file it's load order friendly okay load order friendly that's something I'm not mentioned by the way um, as part of this update uh, it's gonna have broken mods as in like people's load orders and people's mod systems and, and <clears throat> everything aren't gonna work which is gonna be really annoying for people I don't play with mods so I, I never have this problem but if you do it might be better for now if you don't download this until modders have had the chance to work through issues um, I was reading an article on this early just to familiarize myself with what this update was and they already mentioned the SKSE had already been updated even though it's only it only came out like 24 hours ago so that and that one's been done but there's there'll be other things as well that won't have been done yet um, and uh, yeah I'm gonna hazard a guess that if you play with mods stuff is not going to be working which is yeah really annoying when this sort of thing happens when there's new updates i can almost hear the collective groan of the community when there's a skyrim update um but yeah this one says load order neutral it's actually in the top there as well characters followers load order neutral so they're actually plugging this as a benefit <laughs> that it doesn't that it's not gonna break things um yeah, <laughs> let's have a look. She's yeah, she's like she's got the leather armor, and she looks a bit like what's the woman at the Skull Village called? I can't remember her name. You know, the daughter of the Skull leader. But yeah, <laughs> look at her sneaking up on this guard. Okay, yeah, that one seems pretty cool. I mean, I'm sold on the new dialogue, to be honest. I mean, if she, if she, if it was like Catcher the Thief, but she was basically had Lydia's voice and Lydia's dialogue, I'd be like, well, I mean, put her in steel armor, and it's Lydia with blonde hair. But I like, do you know what I mean. It's like, but they've actually, it sounds like there's a there's a real benefit to downloading this. Like they've they've actually taken the time to apply a new yeah fully voiced dialogue system which is yeah that's definitely a usp um so yeah that's i mean i'm that's all i'm going to do to be honest this time i'm um yeah it's this mod came out on this download sorry came out on wednesday uh, tuesday the 5th <coughs> um it is wednesday the 6th when I'm filming this and um, yeah I'm away this weekend so what I'll probably do is I'm probably gonna I will I'll download all this and I'll do videos on each of these um, and I might I might bring some of them together like I'll probably do these two together um, and I don't think this needs its own video but this I'll probably do a video on I'll do a video with on this and probably one on that definitely so yeah um yeah interesting guys new skyrim content new paid content um i'm sure this is going to be controversial let me know what you think of it <clears throat> whether you like it whether you don't like it whether you're going to play with it or you're going to wait for me or another content creator to use it or whatever um yeah, I'm going to end the video here, guys. So, and yeah, go sort sort my voice out because it sounds like I'm potentially going to lose it, which, yeah, it's maybe a good thing that I'm not going to be making any content over the weekend. So, um, yeah, as always, I'm Mike the Gaming Dad, and I will see you next time. <laughs>